<laughs> Ow! And it just punched me in the face. I feel like I've been hit by the Sandman a few times and my eyes look at... Sorry about that. But anyway, on with the fucking show, right? Yay! I missed you. Did you miss me? I hope you missed me. I hope you still remember me. Anyway, greetings and salutations. Welcome to episode... 96. I've now fallen behind all the other younger podcasters and I feel like a schmuck. I really do. Uh, and off and on again. Tangent sent you here. <laughs> um, my name is JD from Ravelry, or you can call me Jeannie. Don't matter. And how are you? Huh? Have you been having fun knitting and crocheting and spinning and all that? Let's get to the show. And yes, I finally finished some spinning. This is the Bonkers. Super Wash Marina well and I had to run it through my spinning wheel again because apparently I suck still but that's not a big deal or a surprise but I like how it looks now it's a little oversupplied but who gives a crap I like it and it's so nice it, it only twistled little bit on itself, you know, just a bit. And this is the flamingo colorway. It's got blacks and pinks and creams and a little bit of brown, and I love it. So I haven't washed or whacked it yet, but I'm finally spinning again, and that has been very fond. My next. I can do it here. This is my next big spinning project. I purchased six ounces of this Llama Romney mix. It needs to be fluffed up a bit. So let's get animal hair all over the beer and the yarn. I responded to this and purchased it because. Well, duh, if I were a festival, you gotta get some fiber if you spin. But the person said that it's, well, they wrote on the bag of fiber that it spun like butter. Now that it's been sitting in a plastic bag for half a year, I'm not sure how well it'll spin. But it seems to be drafting pretty nicely. It's a very light taupe color, kinda. And it's very soft. I think it will be very touchable and pleasant. And that's, they call it Lamney, which is kind of funny. I bought six ounces of it. I'm hoping to divide it into two ounce bumps and then do my very first three ply, which should be fun and a bit of a challenge. I don't know if I'm going to try to go for something as thin as I can get it, or as thin, you know, or just as even as I can get it. Hopefully in a week or two we'll both know what the hell I did with it. But anyway, this is my new stash. <laughs> I made this. So, yeah, that needs a wash and a wank. Whack. Not a wank, a whack. Hello. Let's take a drink and ponder how my mouth has been today. Let's just say I'm getting a little snarky in my old age. Not to people in person much, <laughs> but yes, a little bit snarky, and I need to stop that if I can. I'm not sure if I should or want to, but I'm going to try and tone it down. But anyway, let's show you my whips. Right now, what I'm concentrating on is my Glauberg sock. Now remember, I had only just finished the leg part of it, and I was puzzled over how I was going to handle the 
heal because she had designed this very strange specific heal and I was very much intimidated by not only having to do cabling and an odd heal, but you know, I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> so I didn't. I just found a pattern online that had 64 stitches total to the sock copied and pasted the directions for the heat gusset. Well, not even the gusset. I know how to freaking decrease for a gusset. I just took the heel flap and heel turn instructions that were what I wanted to do, and this is what I came up with. I've got a heel. Oh, so annoying. <laughs> Sorry, I'm complaining about this new form of quick time or whatever. Oh, hey, yay, it went away. <laughs> so, anyway, there's the heel. I just barely started with the... I picked up the heels. I worked one row. Picked up the heel. Jesus. Picked up the instep. <laughs> So now I've got a gaping maw of healy goodness and hopefully I shall retain my sanity while I work the cable pattern. Yes, it's a continuation of this beautiful thing. And this is Shibui Socks yarn, the fingering weight from Shibui. And I must say, while the tonal qualities of the sock and the color is pretty darn nice. I am not terribly happy with the pooling. I thought it would be more of a variegated effect instead of, you know, with the colors plastered all over instead of spotty like they are. Is that not weird? That is so weird. I'm not sure I like that. But I'm going to soldier on and I'm going to finish these damn socks. Even though I have to change a billion and one things to make them work for my klutzy little hands. And just so you know, it is the Glauberg Mystery Sock by Monika Eckert. That's who she is. She, her trademark is very complex patterns. Pretty shawls, pretty socks. So this is not unusual for her. I do love the patterning, but wow, I'm kind of glad that this side is only ribbing. So anyway, onward and upward with that. I've also started a Robin's Egg blue hat by Rachel Iufer. Sorry, bad. It's I-U-F-E-R is her name. Oh. But I worked it out because the fabric was too loosey-goosey. I'm doing it as a chemo hat slash homeless person hat and holy seed stitch. Not a good thing for someone who really does need to keep warm. So I ripped it out. I'm going to start with a size 9 needle and see if I like the fabric any better. And I forgot. Sorry. I'm just drinking a plain old Sam Adams Boston Lager. It is the last beer in the house, so we need to go out and get some more. And not necessarily this stuff, it is kind of ordinary. What? I like the indie stuff, man. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> so, Robin's Egg Blue Hat by Rachel Ufer. And the mystery sock, which is no longer a mystery, <laughs> is my second sock of the year. And I'm going to be working on the foot this week, and it should be interesting. Now, let's go. I know I have other things on the needles. Like, I've got a dishcloth that I'm working on. But, where the hell is it? 
I don't know where the hell it is. Sorry. Ooh. So. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> anyway, my finished objects. Now, I finally finished my Winter's Coming hat. I feel silly about not finishing this earlier. The cocoon is extremely warm, and that's a Rowan yarn in bulky. And I realized once I had finished the entire hat that it wasn't quite low enough for me to cover my ears. It's only like five or six inch brim, and I like it a little longer. So. <clears throat> One night at knit height. <laughs> now I can hear myself talk, oh, which is a good thing. Um, so I added these ear flaps to it. It's a little dorky. They don't always work great. And yes, I do wear my hats these low. I love a good beanie hat. But as you can see, the Fair Isle hat worked fine for me this time around. And it's soft and it's warm. And I, and I really like how the decreases work in that too. So all in all, it's a nice pattern. If you work it and you like a longer brim like I do, add some inches to it so that you're happier with your beautiful hat. It, work, it works up nicely on size 10 and a half needles, I think, with chunky weight yarn. So anyway, that's the uh, Winter's Coming by CeeLo. This is the first hat of the year for me. I've got my second right here. And this is my first charity hat of the year. This is a pattern I keep coming back to because it just suits charity knitting and quick knitting so well. It is pro bono by Angelina Fagan and this is just some oh shoot I'm sorry kids I forgot what it is I think it's charisma or something but anyway simple sweet this is going to a charity and it is my second hat of the year for my 13 hat goal so I'm chugging away on that with the uh, Robin's egg blue hat I should be right on time for the goal and then the last one is Eugenia's mittens I finally freaking finished my second mitten and I am so freaking happy these are lovely cabled mittens the fiber nymph worsted weight yarn is beautiful and warm and I love them. I did screw up a bit. I changed needles which messed up with my gauge right here I think. You can see it's a little bit holy. Eh, what can you do? They're pretty, they're done. I'm happy. And this is even without blocking. They kind of went immediately onto the hands. Cause thankfully enough I finished something by winter's end for winter. Yay! So, very happy with the Eugenia Mittens in the Fiber Nymph Wool by Molly Wood... Woodworth. Molly Woodworth. So, anyway, that's my finished objects. I actually have finished objects. Sure, they're just accessories, but hey. I'm not gonna knock it. <laughs> so, those are my finished objects. Yay! I... Oh, what else? Oh! I've showed you my spinning, my finished objects, my future plans. I really do not freaking know what they are. Because literally I find myself just sitting and staring at the computer playing stupid ass Facebook games or better yet Sims, which is 
well, I might as well play that. I pay for them, right? So anyway, I I play those games and I seem to go into this rabbit hole where it takes me so long to get out and then I find my time wasted and I get upset about that. So I'm gonna try. Today I'm trying to break myself, wean myself off of playing so many Facebook games and doing more with my life and with myself, um, such as it is. Uh, so, yeah, I did participate in a knitting, uh, virtual knit night. Friday night I went to a uh, knitting night at Trillium Yarns. Saturday, I just didn't do much. Sunday, I did end up doing some good for myself. I went out to a... I'm going to keep talking while I look this up where I went. It was very neat. I went to this fiber meetup or something like that, and it was really cute. And it was at Trillium Yarns, which is on the cusp of Basking Ridge, Bernardsville, and my town, which is Morristown. And it was really nice. There was this young lady with her own business which was really impressive and still working on getting there <laughs> sorry <laughs> trillium yarns okay okay so her company is la serene et le corbeau beau <laughs> i'm an idiot with french i took it during a summer class and it's La and then Serene, S-I-R-E-N-E. -E. Next word is A, uh, I think, et, E-T, phone call, <laughs> le, and that's L-E, and then the last word is Corbo, which is C-O-U-R-B-E-A-U. -E and she was hosting a tea and trunk show at Trillium Yarns this past Sunday. And she had brought tea, a little hot pot, some scones, and some jam. And she had her lovely hand spun fibers. And she talked about spinning. And then some other lady came in and talked about owning her own Angora rabbits. And we talked with her. And, you know. I tried to enable people. And anyway, the business is owned by the lovely Deborah Castellano, and she's a super sweet lady. She's on Facebook. So let me see if I can. I'm going to try and have notes for this episode. <laughs> I'll put that on here. I'll put that on my pathetic little notes. Ever since I got the new baby computer, I have not had word or friggin uh. anyway I haven't had word or excel or anything because it was incompatible with what I had on the old baby but I love it anyway so anyway Yes, I went to see that lady. She was neat and cool and it was fun and that was social and I was pleased that I did that. But then I had, I still have tons of laundry to do. That was my weekend. How was your weekend? Tell me. <laughs> I do want to know. I love hearing about what people do. Especially if it's craft related. Because if you're doing something crafty, whether it's great, amazing, or it sucks, or it's just normal, I love it. You're making the world a better place by doing crafts. And hopefully I will keep myself out of the rabbit hole. And, you know, just enjoy the crafts a little more. And that's my title for this, this episode. Rabbit hole. She's done the rabbit hole. Got her out. Before she doesn't shower another evening. 
Speaking of rabbit holes. Yes, this is the tangent part of the episode. <laughs> I didn't even realize that Sims University was out today. So I'm going to go a little hog while installing it. I don't, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to play. But yeah, excitement. New Sims expansion pack with new activities for my Sims to do. Apparently there's science. Science. Anyway. The more stuff I can make them do, the less I have to stand there pressing F4. Go faster, faster. I don't care if you're doing the dishes. Mm. Yes, I still love Sims after all these years. And even though it crashes sometimes. I haven't played it all week, though. Sad teeny. Anyway, let's see. Now, some people did ask me about some stuff on the group. Yay! Um... Polly81, who is really sweet and he has his own podcast, if you want to check it out, it's Polly Knits. He's really sweet and he asked to see the stash. You know how sometimes you have yarn in many places of your home? I even have a fucking car stash. Somebody gave me all this Christmas yarn in acrylic and she smoked, which is her business, but the yarn had a little stink to it. So I said, like hell if this is joining my stash immediately. And the yarn has been sitting there since I think last year. <laughs> and it's in the back seat of my Yaris. The first time I had to have someone sit in the back seat of my car because we were, oh, three people in a three door Yaris. Good lord. Here I am flinging ice scrapers, a jacket, a neck warmer that I knit, and several balls of inexpensive <laughs> acrylic yarn. <laughs> yeah, my friend Cindy was quite amused. But yes, I have several stashes, not just a stash, and I am both pleased and slightly embarrassed. And speaking of my good friend Cindy, she is actually coming over on Saturday to help me go through my stash and organize the craft room because it's becoming nicer on the whole, and I really want to get to sewing my clothes and junk and stuff, so... Uh, for that to happen, I need to open up that room and be able to use it. But right now, there's shit tons of yarn everywhere. And that's the main stash. I have a closet stash. I have a, oh my god, I want to use that right now stash. I've got, I want to use this for charity knitting stash. I've got this and that and, mm. It's a happy little yarn cluster fuck. And yes, Polly, I will be happy to take some pictures of it if I ever have it out. <laughs> Which might give me a freaking heart attack. <laughs> and my lovely friend Heather, who is her hermit librarian, she says that her cats like to really get nosy and they will find a way to open her bags of precious yarn and she wonders if my one cat Frisky who is naughty naughty boy if <laughs> if he ever gets into the yarn the answer is an ecstatic happy little yes no no he doesn't he doesn't give a shit about my yarn he never he never did I have to be dangling a long string of it <laughs> in front of him in order for him to even notice it and it's I'm happy about that trust me so he doesn't bother the yarn at all when I am stash diving downstairs in the den 
he does come in and I think his favorite to sniff is the silk hankies that I bought a while ago back at the um my first Connecticut Fiber Festival I bought some silk hankies that were beautiful vibrant blue and for some reason he really likes those but he only sniffs it he, d he only claws at newspapers and papers and plastic bags are woo yay but that's frisky for ya uh, let's see what else oh I wanted to say thank you very much to Susan Q Knits for purchasing the a gift of a lovely pattern which is the cider press set from Savory Knitting. It was a very pleasant surprise and thank you Susan. It's a hat and fingerless mitt set so I can make various things for people and it's really pretty and um, not bisexual. Asexual? <laughs> it it it's not it's genderless. It doesn't care who whose hat it head it sits on. That's it. Clearly. <laughs> oh boy. A little loopy. Which is good, right? You like that, right? Anyway, let's see what else. Ooh, movies that I've enjoyed. Now, I can only remember two as of this episode, and it is one that I went to. I actually went to the movies. <laughs> I spent money on something that isn't yarn or beer. Oh my god. Anyway, so I went to see Warm Bodies, and oh my god, it was so good. I really liked it. I recommend it highly. It was fun, it was poignant, and pretty damn cool. So I highly recommend that. At least four skeins, if not five, almost. <laughs> so anyway, awesome movie, Warm Bodies. Really cute. And yeah, I don't want to spoil the movie or any of its cuteness. Watch a trailer. You'll enjoy it. Then, <laughs> speaking of spoiling, I watched a movie called The Raven, which is kind of weird. It's kind of anachronistic in its language and everything, and it's about... <laughs> Can you tell it's a little preposterous, even for me? I have a huge imagination and this one had me head tilt. Huh, what? So anyway, Edgar Allan Poe joins up with his new friend, detective so-and-so, and they track down this murderer. <laughs> and John Cusack has Edgar Allan Poe. Holy shit, that was a bad miscasting. Oh my god. Not for one brief second did I say, wow, that's a great choice. Good cast. No. It sucked. It was way too young and way too pretty looking to be Edgar Allan Poe at the end of his life, okay? I know it's Hollywood. I know I'm supposed to suspend my disbelief. But holy crap. Anyway, I'd give it two skeins <laughs> and say if you can watch it for free and you really want to see it anyway, go for it. It is good for a laugh. And you will never ever hear of Edgar Allan Poe going on a rambunctious horseback chase, <laughs> except for here in The Raven. So take that as you will. Um, so I think I've pretty much talked to your off for now. Sorry it was a little bit like two and a half weeks but crap happened and 
like I said, sometimes I just, you know, yeah, and I'm sorry for that, and I hope not to scare any of you by podcasting on a more regular basis. Every two weeks, probably, for a few months, but yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching me tonight. I encourage you to spread the love of crafts around, no matter what it is, whether it's cross stitch, knitting, uh, crochet, weaving, spinning. I don't give a fuck. Help them enjoy adding some color and creativity into your into their lives. Art. Let them do art. Tell them, hey, your photographs are cool. You should put some on the wall or some shit. Encourage. Nurture it in your friends and you'll see them blossom. And if not, enjoy them for who they are, no matter what. Because you never know what life brings you next. And that's my words of wisdom for the week. Weeks. Anyway, let me give you my information. It, my name, again, is JD, and that's J-A-D-E-E -E on Ravelry, JD666 on Plurk, JD666 on Pinterest, where I like to pin half-naked men and crochet and knitting tips. And, um... Ooh, Plurk. Uh, did I say Plurk yet? JD666. See a theme? And you can find this podcast on Twisted Strands with an extra S. Excuse me. Dot blogspot dot com. Not all that. Just Twisted Strands with an extra S dot blogspot dot com. And on iTunes, of course, if you feel like it, please leave a review or at least a star rating. Huzzah! And mm, where else am I? Oh, Google. <laughs> Google, I am Jeannie Huff, which is my proper name. Do not spread it about. Now, as for plans on what I'm going to be doing, Fiverrfest this spring, I was hoping to go to Maryland Sheep and Wall. Unfortunately, the local yarn store that has had a trip down there in the past is not doing it this year, so I am looking for a bus ride. If you know of any from New Jersey, let me know. If not, I might have to forgo it again. And... Ooh, I'll definitely be at the Connecticut Sheep and Wall. I think that's the 27th of April. Let's see what else. And plus I'll just be dipping about New Jersey like I always have. Anyway, wonderful talking to you. I hope you enjoyed the show. I want to thank you very much for joining me, whether you're young or old, new or a long time viewer thank you so much, I appreciate every one of you and I wish you happy crafting, have a good two weeks and I will see you then bye everybody <laughs>